Hey, what's up guys, I'm Styler and in this video I'm going to review the Migo S8 in black that currently goes for around 160 US dollars or 137 euro. Remember also to check my full unboxing video, you'll find a link to that one in the video description. So without any further ado, let's start the video. So the Migo S8 clearly resembles the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus and with the latest YouTube app, you can also now even zoom in videos, so it uses the entire display. So we have the MediaTek 6750T, which is an octa-core CPU clocked at 1.5 GHz. A 6.1 inch display with resolution 2160 by 1080 pixels. We also have 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigs of internal storage. Out of this internal storage, we have about 51 gigs left but you also have the option to install a micro SD card that then will take up one of the SIM card slots in the dual SIM tray. The design is nice, even though it's a bit thicker than the Galaxy S8 Plus from Samsung. So we have a black metal frame. We have a super shiny but beautiful curved back made of glass, which really is a fingerprint magnet. And so far it seems to be pretty resistant against scratches. In the top we have a single LED flash, which is just average. A dual rear camera setup with a 30 megapixel plus 5 megapixel sensor. And a fingerprint scanner. On the front we find a notification LED, which only seems to work in green. A 5 megapixel front facing camera with face beauty and color filters. And a good 6.1 inch Full HD Plus display with the resolution of 2160 by 1080 pixels. And on-screen buttons that look exactly like on the Samsung S8. The quality of the front camera is just what I would call average. In low light it gets very grainy, so it's only okay for fun pictures and social media. The beauty mode can be adjusted and it is also possible to apply different color filters. And last, it does also have a small, but unfortunately weak front LED flash that doesn't really help that much. In the camera settings we find stuff like picture size, face detection and much more. As for the screen, it's very vibrant and it doesn't look bad at all, but we do have some rather thick bezels in the side. The top earpiece provides very loud and clear sound. The corners are rounded, but it appears just to be a frame put on top of the screen. The viewing angles are nice, the brightness is good and the picture sharp and clear. As for the sensitivity, this seems to be perfect for me, so you can touch the screen in 5 places at the same time, and I haven't experienced any kind of issues. The phone supports air gestures, and you can reorder the on-screen buttons. We have flip to silence, split screen mode, and a special camera side key. The fingerprint scanner works good. I mean like on most cheaper phones it's not the fastest to wake and unlock, however it's accurate and can be used without any issues. In the lounger it will also work as a back button when you press it shortly and home if you hold it. We also have a 3.5mm headphone jack that provides good quality with a lot of volume. And something we don't see on all phones today, especially if they are using USB Type-C, so that's definitely a nice plus. On the left we find the power and volume keys, which are solid and responsive. Moving to the bottom, we notice the matte black antenna lines. Something that looks like two speakers, however we first have the microphone, then a USB Type-C port and a built-in bottom speaker. The speaker quality is about average and provides a good amount of volume and did surprise me a little bit. As for the USB Type-C port, it supports USB on the go. So inside this phone we have a 3300mAh battery, not the biggest but it's possible to get through a full day on one charge, with about 4 hours of on-screen time, so the battery life could definitely be better, and it unfortunately doesn't support any kind of fast charging, so it will take more than 2 hours to do a full charge. 
The phone is using a very simple looking camera app, but it does offer a lot of features and settings like for example, HDR mode, electronic image stabilization, face detection, exposure, ISO and more. Beside video, photo and beauty mode, we also have panorama and SLR mode and a bunch of color filters. The SLR mode, also known as bokeh mode, just seems to be a gimmick, like on most of these budget China phones, it simply creates a circle around the subject and blurs everything around it. For a phone in this price range, the pictures are average, they are not super and sometimes it is a hit or miss and even lack some detail, but for fun snapshots, they are acceptable. And recorded video also looks fine, but again, nothing special. Regarding the GPS, it surprised me with a fast lock, good stable signal reception and accuracy down to about 3 meters, so definitely good for GPS navigation. As for the sensors, the phone has all the necessary sensors, but CPU Z didn't seem to like the phone, but it has gyroscope sensor, ambient light sensor and compass, and 360 VR and the compass works fast and precise so no problems here. Moving on to the performance. The chipset used in this phone is on the low budget level, so the score is of course not the highest. In N2 it scores close to 42,000, which is very normal for this kind of chip. It is not a high-end gaming phone and games like Asphalt 8 only runs really good in medium settings. In high settings it simply has too many frame drops for my taste. After a longer time of gaming, it gets a bit hot around the camera on the back. Normal, but not bad at all. The phone is using Android 7 with support for split screen, multitasking is smooth and fast and the launcher can be customized with themes and out of the box all the Google apps came pre-installed on the phone. The connectivity is good on this phone and it can connect to 3G, 4G and Vo LTE and it also has support for Wi-Fi calling which will provide you with much better call quality. Of course we also have support for LTE Band 20 and the Wi-Fi down and upload speed is average. Now it's time for my final verdict. So this is yet another try to copy the design of the Galaxy S8 Plus from Samsung. It is better than other S8 China models that I lately have tried, but it is still far from perfect. But it manages to deliver a fast UI, good sound quality, a nice fingerprint scanner and YouTube where you actually can zoom, so the entire display is used. Also it has stuff like gyroscope for VR, fast compass, good GPS and a notification LED. On the bad side, it is not the fastest for 3D games, it's pretty heavy plus thicker. It has a fake dual camera setup and last but not least the battery life could be a lot better. 
But besides that, the phone is pretty average. Compared to the low price, you still get a good smartphone with a lot of nice features that currently does it a little bit better than the competition in the same price range. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching this video and I hope to see you in my next one.